starting is never the problem. It's 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 always like you just got to start and and you got to get into motion. And as soon as you're in motion, it's easier to steer than to set up your car in the right direction. What's going on? You're listening to episode 102 of the Perspective Podcast, and I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. The show is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, my guests and I provide the tools to find your voice, overcome adversity, and make an impact with your work. That one's most important. I'm all about building community, so at the end of each episode, I share the love and plug a listener of the week. Stick around to the end and figure out how you can get a shout out on a future episode. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Industry Print Shop out of Austin, Texas. Industry is the authority in screen printing, apparel, and posters. Their all-star staff will guide you through your order process and help you rock your vision from an idea to a tangible product. Check out industryprintshop.com or follow them at Industry Print Shop on the Grams. Now that we're all settled in, we got a big one today. But you and I, we live in a time where people expect things to be handed to them. Instead of finding a solution, they want the solution to find them to avoid having to get their hands dirty. When in reality, the ones shaking things up and making things happen for themselves are the doers. Doers take initiative and seek out the best way to solve their problem. They don't wait for it to come to them. Doers use adversity and failure as a springboard to find what works in their favors. Doers don't complain. They put their heads down and grind behind the scenes in silence. Essentially, doers do, and they put themselves in a position for opportunities to come their way. Cue today's guest. I'm really stoked for this one. We got Stefan Coons, who's built a creative empire with lettering and digital products for designers. At such a young age, you'd think his amassing of an Instagram audience of over 300,000 loyal followers happened overnight, but I can assure you it didn't. Stefan is a doer. Stefan puts in so much work behind the scenes developing his craft, problem solving for himself, while also attracting and manifesting massive opportunities. Most importantly above all, Stefan is a giver. When he solves a problem, he packages up what he learns and he shares it with us hungry creatives in his audience. He shares in the form of courses, tutorials, workshops, and even his successful products like his grid builder, procreate brushes, and composition grids. On today's episode, Stefan and I pull back the curtain on topics like growing an audience by listening and serving, creative problem solving for yourself and others, pushing your limitations and aiming at big targets, building passive income with digital products, and most importantly, we figure out what his favorite kind of pizza is. I have no doubt this one's going to give you a spark to elevate your work and your work ethic as we close out 2018 with a bang. Stick around to the end also because Stefan gives you a promo code for the first 100 listeners in his shop. And I should mention, he never gives out promo codes or discounts, so this is special. You can find the show notes today's episode packed with Stefan's work at perspective-collective.com slash 102. And you guys have been sharing machines over the last few weeks, so let's keep this train rolling. If you find value in today's episode, take a screenshot, share it with me on your Instagram stories by tagging Perspective Podcast. It's always great connecting with you each week, and I I just thoroughly enjoy doing it. So thank you so much for sharing the show. You're listening to episode 102 of the Perspective Podcast with Stefan Coons. Let's go. What's going on today? I'm joined by one of my most talented and hardworking lettering friends I know Stefan Coons and what's up man thank you so much for taking the time this has been crazy trying to line something up today for you I know you've been traveling so thank you so much for being here and and spending the time to shine some value on us today thank you very much for having me on the podcast if you could see me like I guess you can only hear my voice but I'm blushing and it's it's really nice (laughs) and and you're just out in the open right now right yeah it's it's pouring down rain it's a thunderstorm right now in sydney and i'm like i'm just in a building right next to my favorite cafe uh where i 
do a lot of drawing actually like i befriended the the owner the the manager from that coffee shop and and like been drawing on his window so you see you've seen a lot of uh, a couple of windows project that i did on there yeah well it's amazing that you were able to fit this in because we're in you're like 16 hours ahead of me it's a whole day is worth ahead of you so it's 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 been great to make this happen. So for those who somehow do not know who you are, give us a brief Wikipedia page summary about yourself. All right. So my name is Stefan Kunz. I'm a lettering artist from Zurich. I've been into banking earlier, uh, like quit uh, art school after a year and pursued banking because I thought I wasn't cut out to be an artist. And then finally, I uh, quit banking because I knew that this wasn't the future for me and like kind of slowly came back into lettering like with through instagram 2017 was the year that it really like took off i had a book uh set to release and i had pretty awesome clients to work with uh fun projects uh something in iceland with skillshare and like doing stuff with adobe so it was really like it was a crazy year for me and this year as well just like it's been an absolute uh dream year as well you are everywhere right now but when did you actually stumble across lettering and when did you hit that moment like you were just like a light bulb went off like i'm good enough you know i belong here i don't think i've ever hit that good enough light bulb like like from yourself you know kind of the the expectation as soon as you start spending a lot of time like focusing on other artists and like learning from others like that's how i got into lettering and learning from others and copying their styles and and kind of adapt and like taking whatever I found really good, like take that for myself. So every time, like I still look up to so many people, so many people you've had on your show and I've, that's where I still feel like there's a, a huge gap towards these people, but there's also like, I've made a lot of progress. So looking back, I'm always excited to see where I've come from. When I stumbled upon lettering came through actually a series of events like i started off doing instagram like taking instagram more seriously stop posting of like personal uh photos of my food and my i don't have a dog i would have said dog or cat but i don't have any of those and i actually decided to pursue instagram more seriously like what year would that have been like 2016 2015 when i chose to switch my account to something more serious it was like 2012 okay and then beginning of 2013 i think that was when it started and I began with over with an app to to um, create like quotes and kind of evolve from there, like always more quotes, longer quotes, kind of more elaborate. Like that's where I started doing more composition. And it was a as it was an app with fonts and text and there wasn't really a lot of freedom. It was amazing. I even got to 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 get to know the the uh, the owner or the creator of the app who lived in Cape Town and we visited him on on a vacation he allowed us to stay at his place so it was really random but then it came a point where the app like was limiting myself like to create and so i started drawing the letters like i love drawing when i was a kid i drew uh, houses i drew people i drew everything but never letters and and so i started drawing letters and that's when i kind of like i didn't know lettering was a thing yeah and and so I didn't exactly know how to share that or just like even search for that. So I was only looking for stuff on Pinterest and on the web. And I didn't know that there were like, I don't think there were any tutorials back then, like on YouTube, on Skillshare or anywhere. Like nowadays you have like a load of courses, like, like there's so much out there. It's kind of hard to find good stuff. But back then I don't think there was anything. So you, I had to learn by copying by just like analyzing and and learn that so that's kind of my method of of teaching and like how you could learn to do that too i'm big into consistency because i think the more consistent you are the more you have a chance of reminding people you exist and so you always showed up on my feed and one thing i also really respect is you always have a good message you know what what is the goal with each piece that you put out what's your overall why why do you do what you do then the message behind everything that i Post or that I want to do is is like inspire and encourage and so that was back like when I started sharing words you have to think about what words do to people and and just today I was thinking of like words for good which kind of reminds me of like words you use are meant to be used for good and not like not the other way around and so 
you just told me about um, being bullied and I've been bullied as well. And, and like just talking about it now realizes that I like the impact it has on you, like words can damage you so much. And like I started watching This Is Us on the plane and, and I saw like the, the one girl, she's like overweight and, and she got hurt by, by the words that people called her and looked at her. And, and that made me realize like if people just hear different words are reminded of better words, then words can speak life. And so that's my mission. My goal with my Instagram is to, to share things that are encouraging and inspiring and, and yeah, keep on, on helping others through that. And that's kind of also just a way to say thank you for everyone who's following me, who uh, actually takes the time to to look at my feed and and like my stuff, comment on my stuff. And and the same way you try to be with the podcast, like being real, like sharing the not the glamorous, the highlights, but then go deep. And usually when I start writing a caption, I, I try to remind myself, like, hey, how can I make this relatable? Like, how can I share something of my life? that I'm sure that other people will be able to relate because if we think that nobody else will be able, like nobody else feels that way, then it's just not true. So whenever we have an experience, sharing that with others helps them to feel the same way or just like being able to relate to each other. When you're able to share your story, it gives permission for someone to accept whatever their story is, whatever demons they're going through, whether you see it or not, that's that's a very powerful thing. You just summarized that really well for me. <laughs> uh, I've, I've been working on saying it in speeches and stuff, but that's literally what it is. I, I'm regurgitating what I hear other people say, but I've seen you amass a insane audience where I'm going to brag for you now. So uh, you, you recently just hit over 300,000. You did something crazy as hell by drawing on your car. It wasn't my car. I wish it was my car. Okay, well, we could just pretend it was your car. That's still, it's still pretty cool that you got to do that. What would you say the biggest thing is in your success of building an audience? Because you building an audience, I think, has landed you incredible opportunities. You get to travel around the world, land amazing projects. But what do you think it was? Being consistent, pouring your story into things, making sure you respond to everyone, being tactical with hashtags and curation? or It's actually the thing that everyone will, will overlook. It's showing up every day. It's, it's so hard because growing to 300,000 doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen over a year. It happens over years. And like some people will maybe get like to 300,000 overnight. Uh, some people will take like years and years and for me it took like it really took over than three years but then took everything else before that and just like when I realized that I was growing about I think 200 followers a day I was counting up like how much how far would I get till the end of the year if that would be like if that would happen every day for the rest of the year and I came to a number it was like a hundred thousand and so I was like well I only have to grow 200 a day only. I know. I'm just over here like I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> yeah. Then it's figuring out how that happens and like keep showing up, keep trying to, to push it, keep trying to, to, to put yourself into it. And I think a lot of great things have happened through that. But I also see that a lot of that uh, success and, and it's, it's always easy, like, you know, when football players like point to God and say like, hey, it's all him. But it's it's so true that it is a lot of what God has done. And it's like all the things that I've been trying to pursue myself, like the clients, the the jobs, the the project that I've been trying to to pull myself. Like it was either really hard or it was like it always failed at the end. But the greatest project, they just happened to land in my lap and like the, the airport project working for the airport Zurich and doing like their campaign for, for the summer was one of the biggest jobs I've ever done. It's, it randomly happened and how it happened was just like, you know, it's, they didn't really find my Instagram. They just saw some of my work and, and they liked it and, and they reached out and I never could have dreamed that happening. And so many of my projects just happened like that. And, and that's where I'm thankful for. And I feel like, 
if I need a better agent than God, then yeah, it wouldn't be impossible. But he's been my my best agent so far. I, I think it's it's great whether you're religious or not. There's still an element of having faith in something that you can, you know, you can put in the work, but eventually you need to just trust that somebody else, whether it's Mother Nature or Father Universe or God or whatever it is, that you can just put your trust in them that they'll take care of you. But I believe you've worked your butt off to land these opportunities as well and the luck and preparation meet and give opportunity. It's like it's it's hard work to to put in a, the everyday like you like I work on my craft as much as I can and and try to put in the hours like there there is always the like every soccer player would tell tell you the same thing like you have to work out every day. You have to put in the hours, you have to train your body, you have to to do the best you can. But then there's always the extra element that you really don't have any any um control over and you just have to like put you in your trust in like you said like if it's something else for you then it's it's that but for me it's really it's it's what god has done and he's he's been leading that and and i didn't have to strive for that myself and so i've been really really thankful for that i i respect you man that's beautifully said you've what's been the importance of building products, digital products? Because I know, I believe you started off with just tangible like prints and stuff, but how has creating extra streams of revenue of digital products been helpful? And where do you think of these product ideas? Are you just listening to your audience? So my friend told me like, you should sell your products like posters and stuff. And and I wasn't big on that. Like I still wouldn't go into the ship, shipping of, of prints and products it's a lot of work yeah it's it's a lot of work it's a lot of like just handling like boxes and stuff and like administrative stuff and yeah you could get someone to do that for you but still like there is even services that do that for you but it's not the same thing like either you do it really well or you just don't do it and and so i decided like to go the like let's do it just digitally like people can buy the prints and and they can print it out uh wherever they want what size they want like give them the most flexible route they wanted and like if they really want a high-end print like go for it like get it really well printed but then if you just want to go to costco and and have it printed there like they do an amazing work so why not do that do it there and get like it for 10 bucks i was really shocked at i like i thought the demand would be much higher but then but then i realized like or I saw it that people weren't buying it and and I was just like oh like bummed out about that and and that was something that I I carried with me like I didn't put so much effort in it because I didn't see big um big impact and big results uh or big return on investment and so I kind of lowered down and also it gave a f- it was hard because it gave the my audience a, a wrong knowledge of like pricing like seeing your posters like digital posters for 15 bucks they think like your work is worth 15 bucks so like they were requesting things and when i sent them the price to do something custom like they were shocked at like the price which i totally understand but at the same time it's like i hope that i sell like 100 prints or or even more but not the other way around and I learned a lot from that. And as soon as I started selling products that were creative products, I learned that there was a big difference because creative products is, is like Lightroom presets. If, like, if I sell you a preset, you will, you'll create an image and you will sell that image like as your own. You'll never, you never use the, the creator of the preset and you never tag that person, which is totally fine by me, but you'll, you'll have the ownership of your, what you've created. And people are a lot more able or willing to invest into something like that that will enable them to create better and create more without having to give them credit. With convenience, too. Yeah, exactly. With convenience. I'm someone who rarely buys products. Like, I do everything custom. I create my own products, like my own tools. And, and for example, the grids were exactly that. I, I did that for, I think, like two years before I actually started selling them. I, and I thought like everyone's doing that. Like it's, it's obvious. It's completely evolved thinking on your end for real. It is. Yeah. And, and that has, when, when I saw that, like there was a demand and the first bundle that I put out, like it went nuts. Like it was crazy. It paid more than like almost as well as my, one of my biggest projects that I've done. So like suddenly my shop takes off, like 
I've had great projects. I still do a lot of client work, but then suddenly my shop takes off and, and I wonder like, all right, like analyzing the whole thing, like from Instagram, you learn to analyze everything you put out. You start to, to addressing like, why are they buying this and not this? And why has this so much impact? And do you have to like promote it more? Do you have to like work on this more? And, and so a lot of thinking went into there and just realizing what I told you before, like these giving people that tools to create and make it more easy and without like without the hustle. And, and so that was, was an amazing thing. And then I partnered up with like later, I partnered up with Ian Bernard. Shout out to Ian. We love Ian here. I've known Ian since his first early products. I was a beta tester for like his first Photoshop texture press way back. Like when he had like maybe 5,000 followers. So Ian and I go back. Yeah, he, he and I go back too, like probably around the same time. Like he sent me that texture press pack like for free. And like, I was just like, dude, this is so nice of you. And like, and then, yeah, we've, we've kept in touch. Like we started being in touch later on, but it was just like, it was just amazing. And yeah, he, he brings quality. Like he puts so much time into those products and working with him on the grid builder. Like, uh, it was just so good. You two make such a good team together on your products, especially just like tag teaming your audiences. They overlap so much. Yeah. We've seen the results of like the grid builder and we're working on the next project right now on, it's called the letter builder. And, and this is, if you think of all the products, like the 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 pre-composed grids it's great for people who just like i don't want to think about something i just want to do it and i want to fill it out the boxes and then there's a grid builder who's like you know what i want to like i still want to create my own grids like i i want to have more control or even flexible like it's like the android people and then finally like the grid builder is like you know what like the back layer is like drawing every single la- letter basically for serif and sans serif letters, but it will make it so easy to, to draw every letter and like make it consistent, precise, and, and hassle-free. I think I've seen Ian maybe using it in some of his videos, I believe, with like the circles and the graph, okay. Yeah, and we're just like, we're, we're still tweaking something. We're like expanding it to make it a full product. And I hope maybe by the time we release this uh, podcast, we hope we'll be either in beta testing or done with the product. So it will be released. Like it happens in stages. We, we're both not working like full time on it, but we're always like testing it out. Like, and we're always, and, and I say that with, with a sense of like, we're trying to bring the best quality into our products. We're always trying to work it out. Like if we're not using it, we don't believe it's a good product. And, and we need to use it and that will make it a good product because I don't need to sell things like that I don't use and that I just want to make money with. So everything that I make, I try to think of how can I make life easier for other people? What are the things that I've been struggling with? So we, we usually like talk about like things that we feel like, ah, oh, this is frustrating and then try to figure out like, well, is there a way to make it easier? And, and so that's, that has been a lot of fun, especially like, we still love the creative side, but this side has been like helping others create more. And, and lately my, my kind of life, well, like my, the, the sense is the quote that I draw the most is like create something today, even if it sucks. I like the crap one on the toilet paper roll. That's my favorite one. Yeah, that's good. I had to change it to crap instead of shit because like the American audience doesn't like the. And sorry if I said the word right now, dude, I if you don't if you ever see my podcast, I was trying to keep it clean on this episode for you. You can say shit. You can say whatever you want here. So this is a uh, this is a no filter podcast. This is the furthest I'll go. Create something today, even if it sucks, but you can suck less with our design tools like and, and using our design tools hopefully you'll suck less that is such a good pitch yeah it's it's been fun and uh, like i wish i i can i can create more i can create better products and keep on creating and like find new ways to help people and i like there's always this fear of like oh we'll we'll run out of ideas or of ways to to help people but then again it's like it's probably endless. I hope it's endless. I think it's endless, especially you and Ian are so good at listening to your audience and identify a problem. If anybody wants to succeed in creating products right now, you just gave such a gold mine is basically solving a problem for someone. Providing value and solving a problem is always a way that you'll be able to succeed in whatever entrepreneur creative business you got. Yeah.
it's the business 101. Like if you want to create a startup, like figure out a problem and how to solve it. And, and you already got a business and a market for that. You know, I got to give a shout out to our sponsor, Tony Diaz and the industry print shop crew out of Austin, Texas. They are the leaders in the world of screen printing. They work with juggernauts like Draplin, Morning Breath, and James Victoria, just to mention a few of them, and they want to make cool shit with you too. So if you're looking to get started in the merch game, slang in prints or apparel, take advantage of this podcast listener only deal. When requesting a quote at industryprintshop.com, mention promo code PERSPECTIVE to receive free screen setup up to $120 or get 100 free 3 by 3 inch die cut stickers on any new minimum order placed. Say you have a four color design. This promo code literally saves you $120 right there in screen setup. Or get the stickers and leave your mark by plastering 100 of your designs all across the world. You know, leave your mark. All right, it's up to you. Either way, it's a win-win. You can also stay up to date with their new work they're slanging at Industry Print Shop on Instagram. Again, get that new quote at industryprintshop.com. Mention promo code PERSPECTIVE. You'll thank me later. I got two more questions and I usually have a rapid fire mode of questions. So what's one piece of advice you'd give to a creative at any stage who struggles starting or sticking with it? Actually, the thing is, you don't need anything to get started. That, that's a myth. People are always asking me, like, how do I get started? How do I do this? And if you're asking that question, you're already the wrong place. Like, I, I rarely lo- like to give an answer except for just do it. Because if you're not doing it, then, like, you're waiting for something. And that something will never be good enough to, for you to help get started. Like, like you with your podcast. Probably nobody told you to do it except that you are doing it and and you're you're just doing it like you're figuring it out on on the way and Instagram was the same thing for me like I I didn't know anything about Instagram when I started like I just started to post things and then see how it went and how I can improve things and I've learned so much over the last four years uh, doing it getting to 300,000 is like like it's a game for me it's it's playing playing numbers and playing analytics and and seeing how you can tweak tweak things and like i saw that one of my last posts did so super well it's like reverse engineering it and and figuring that out and so that's why like starting is never the problem it's 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 always like you just got to start and and you got to get into motion and as soon as you're in motion it's easier to steer than to set up your car in the right direction and then finally, to, to keep on doing it, it's like, it's good to have a goal. So the first one is like a movable goal. Well, no, actually, the first one is milestones. It's like 100,000 followers is a milestone. 200,000 followers is like making 100K or 200K. It's like, it's a number that you can, you can reach. The thing with that number, it's, it's always going to be there. So it's always going to stay where, where, it's, where it's at. And you'll either like, you'll walk closer you'll be there faster or not so 100k like i'll reach 400,000 somewhere sometime like it will always be at the same same place and i don't have to move it then there are the movable goals and those i love those ones ian actually was one of my movable goals like flexibility no so it's 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 something yeah something that moves along so he his numbers of followers it's always moving and and for the longest time like i think it took over a year to to pass him like because he was always moving ahead of me and so if I wasn't doing my job well then he could have just taken off and and reaching him would have been become more difficult and so last year I think I I took over and and beat him in the numbers and he told me like if you ever beat me uh if you ever have more falls than I have then I'll I'll stop talking to you and I'm glad he didn't (laughs) he didn't he didn't stick with that one but yeah, it's it's something that keeps on moving and like you'll reach it if if you keep pursuing it. So the the first one, like like I said, it's it's something it will never move, but it's always there and it's it's a good thing to have a reach. And the second one is great to to keep working on it because if you get complacent, you just fall back. It's like this these walkable like how do you call them at the airport? The escalators. Escalators, yeah. I, the ones that just are straight though and get you there quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so if if you stop walking, like you fall behind. If you keep like walking at normal pace, you stay at the like. If you walk the other way, like you will st stay at the same spot. But if you move faster, then you'll pass someone or you get to the other side. And that's kind of the image I have, like of of being on Instagram. Is like you can always get to that point, you, but you have to move. Before we go into rapid fire question, what's one dream you have for yourself that's so big right now that it scares you? Because I believe like you're supposed to be scared of big dreams in your life. Okay, that that's what helps you uh, stay hungry and stay challenged. They're like things that I like. I'm dreaming of. It's like drawing on an airplane on an A380, like having my design on an A380, seeing that in the skies, that would be like, I can't imagine. Like, I love flying that much. I love airplanes. And, and like this year, my goal was to get gold says like freaking flyer just so I can have it. And it was a goal. And I, I reached it this year, like a couple of weeks ago. So that's the milestone goal. Exactly. It's a milestone goal. And, and so for me, that was, that was really fun. And, and that's why like flying, like I've lived always like for the last five years, been living like five minutes away of, from the airport. So I've seen airplanes come in, go out. And, and I think that dream of seeing my design on one of those airplanes, like, yes, that would be amazing. Is there anything that makes you nervous, like speaking in front of 50,000 people or something like that, sharing your story? None of that makes you nervous? No, it's just... I love it. It's, it's easy for me whenever I'm in a situation that gets like it's hard like even as soon as i start drawing it's, it gets easy but thinking of these things like drawing on a car like that got me nervous until i was drawing on the car and as soon as i had like i hit my my pen on the car i knew like it was going to be fine but before then i was just like oh like uh how do i do this like will, how will it look but then you forget everything about those things because you're so focused on what you do and so that's why i say like you got to get in motion you it just do it and then you'll progress from there. Awesome. Let's go to rapid fire questions. If you were on death row, what would your last slice of pizza be? It would be a margarita. Well, actually, no. You know what? There's one pizza place that was in Dusseldorf in Germany and they have, they actually won prizes for the best pizza and it's like a, they just cook the pizza wow. dough and then they put cold tomato sauce on it and mozzarella, like this really nice uh, liquid mozzarella. They put it on, it's like cold, and it's like in summer, it's the most beautiful thing. It's like most refreshing thing to eat. It's not like pizza, but actually, I really like I've been waiting to get another slice of that pizza. So I would go with this one. All right. This is the first time I've asked anybody this one. I like this. If you could have lunch with one person dead or alive, who would it be and why? It would be either uh, Elon Musk or uh, Richard Branson. Like, I'd definitely choose Jesus, but I'll, I'll see him later. Word. <laughs> But no, Richard Branson and, and Elon Musk, I think it's, it's really interesting how they like they've been building businesses and they've been growing things and like how they think. And and like they're totally different from Spectrum. Like Richard Branson is just like he loves people and he tries to give them the best. And Elon Musk is like, what like what are the essential things that this world needs and like what is our doom and how can we fix that? And so it's really interesting to see their perspective and how they build like these crazy businesses, like and Steve Jobs maybe. Like I love business people because they're like business oriented. They're like they go to the point. They don't try to talk around things. They solve problems and bring value. Yeah, exactly. Where do you seek your inspiration online and offline? Online would definitely be Pinterest. I just I've fallen in love lately with Pinterest because of that easily function of saving it into boards and like like saving different types of inspiration but at the same time it's it's annoying because you only see the things that you are searching for so it like just gives you more of the same thing yeah and like figuring a way how to break out of that and that's where i like to go to design inspiration they just have a good quality on of of like artsy things i'm trying to develop my craft more into a, a more visual artists artistic way so like trying to develop my uh, visual style which is really hard and i struggle with because i'm still very business focused so like it has to have a function but then offline i love bookstores actually i love going into libraries and or or bookshops and see look at the book covers and or read like like skim through a book a magazine or something like that cool
Yeah, I, I, it's fun for me to go to Barnes and Noble and see your book on the counter. <laughs> nice little plug there. That was fun. <laughs> okay, hey, hey, script serif or sans serif? This I don't know. At least I think I do, but man, you 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 hit all the styles, so I really don't know. If I only had to choose one, say what I want it to be. I think I would go with sans serifs. That's not what I wanted. You want to change your answer so we can edit this? No, I'm just kidding. You're good. No, what did you want? Script. I'm a script junkie, so I love your script game. It's 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 the nicest way, like the easiest way to to write with by like with hands without it looking too too clunky. Because it's funny, I I realized this, and I, you know, you you can't put a pin on it on on what is wrong with your type, but with like sans serif and serifs, um, it's it's really easy. You just know like ah, oh, it doesn't look right, because we've we read like everyday aerials and like on the web on everything we just see those letters and we just know it's like looking at people and trying to animate a person like um, a person's face it's just you always nail it instantly you see like no this is animated and the same thing goes with type and it's so harder than like script makes it a lot easier and there's a lot more playfulness uh, that goes with it and so that's what I had to learn like why is it so hard to actually write like fonts really well without people seeing like, oh, this is not a font. Like this is clearly not a font. And then also embrace it. Like Mary Kate uh, McDevitt makes it so beautiful in, in the sense of she, she actually uses that to her advantage to like, let's make it wobbly. Let's make it like not straight. Imperfected touch. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then, but then try to imitate what she does and you realize what she does is really, really hard to nail that style. So it's 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 really interesting because it comes with a lot of practice, with a lot of time, and with just putting all the effort you can into it. And a friend of mine, uh, Blacklist Studio, like um, Nathan Johnson, he he creates these pieces where he draws uh, posters and 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 paintings, and it looks like a super simple and like easy font, like like scribbles but it's it's so artistic that it's it's almost impossible to recreate except for him because he just he just has that feel for for that type found their style you know that you crafted your own style exactly it's beautiful i feel like you are definitely crafting your own style that i see a lot of people trying to get that chalkboard style down now so i I think you're there man thank you (laughs) Well, where can people go to find you online? All right. So number one definitely is Instagram. And from there, you would find definitely everything through my link in bio. Yeah, there's YouTube. There is my website. There's my shop on my website. Facebook, which I don't know if people still use Facebook. I I know people still use Facebook. I rarely use Facebook. I kind of have linked with my Instagram. But yeah, I'm... I'm definitely going to try to upload more videos on YouTube. Like I've, I've come from a video background, uh, learned editing videos and, and like create music videos and all that, but then moved away. And now like when my voice is lettering and, and doing video is like, it's a whole different thing. And then thinking of more things, it's, it's getting so complicated. Instagram TV. Are you big on that right now? Haven't done much. It's, it's an easy thing to figure out what Instagram will push is like what's whatever they they whatever is new and and so if you if you want to grow fast and get in like be in their favorable algorithms it's definitely use their products that they they are promoting or that are just not getting used much so i for one was thinking that carousels wasn't a great way to share pictures i was wrong and I, I like my post that has the most likes at the moment has like, was it a carousel posted at the weirdest time of the day? And, and yeah, just, just worked. And, and because yeah, they, they've crafted everything around it. So it gets more likes, but then videos, it's a different story and all that. So yeah, it's learning all these little things. That's a strong tip in itself, man. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I know this wasn't the probably easiest thing to lock down in time and uh, record, but man, you made it happen and I can't thank you enough. So thank you so much for shedding all this wisdom and value and this motivation on people today. Thank you. Yeah, well, let's keep in touch and I can't wait to hear about your next products, man. I'll be sure to push them. Yeah, man. Thank you. All right, cool. Thanks for your time. Peace. See ya. Bye. Step 
Stefan Coons, everyone. Wow, what an insanely talented dude, and at such a young age, I truly believe he's barely even scratched the surface of his potential, which is, you know, kind of scary. The the room, the ceiling that he can still reach, and probably shattered through too. So, Stefan is going to be a legend one day, and I'm just extremely grateful to be along for the ride. And you know the drill, if you found value in today's episode, go shower and pepper Stefan with some love and tell him the biggest takeaway you got out of this one. Oh yeah, like I mentioned before, Stefan doesn't do discounts. However, for us today, he did. Visit his shop at typoxphoto.com slash shop, like typo times photo, and use promo code PERSPECTIVE to receive 10% off your entire order, and this only works for the first 100 purchases. And I'm talking about products like his brushes for Procreate, his grid builders that are absolutely insanely popular, and his composition grids. These things are massively elevating thousands of creatives' work, so do not sleep on this deal. Take advantage of it now because he doesn't do discounts. Again, that's perspective at typoxphoto.com slash shop. Thank you so much for making time for us today, Stefan. We, and myself especially, extremely appreciate you. Moving on to the listener of the week. And just so you know, moving forward, I'm combining the dose of inspiration with the weekly review. And in this section, I'll be reading your Apple podcast or iTunes reviews, if you're still calling it iTunes. And in this section, I'll be reading your Apple podcast slash iTunes reviews or your podcast testimonial messages you've sent me through social media. So the listener of the week this week goes to iRoll Creative and they titled their Apple podcast review as great resource. They state, I had the chance to see one of Scotty's talks live at Creative South, and I remember feeling so ready to create afterwards. Wow, that was like back in 2016, and that was easily my second talk I've ever given. That's so cool that you were there. They also state, it's not always easy to keep the high of inspiration in life, but this podcast is honestly such a great resource of inspiration and encouragement to get you through the grind. Amen. Thank you. That's exactly what this is supposed to do. And I'm so stoked you got to see me speak at Creative South all those years ago. That was, that talk changed my life. So I'm glad you could be a part of that. And also, if you are a listener on Apple Podcasts, will you please take the time to subscribe as well whenever you leave a rating or review? That also helps the show climb the charts and get discovered by more people. So please make sure you're subscribing. And as I sign off, I got to give a huge thank you, one, to my podcast editor, Anya Brennan for making me sound so good, especially on days like today where I don't sound the best. I've got a little bit of a head cold. So she's working her magic over there in Ireland. And then huge thank you to my executive assistant, Paige Garland. I could not do this without you two. You girls make this so much easier to maintain each week. And a huge thanks goes to Nick Jenkins of Bluka for all the dope theme music you hear on the show. Listen and support him at SoundCloud, Spotify, and Instagram at Bluka. That's B-L-O-O-K-A-H. And as you finish off your week strong, I want to continue to encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this. <laughs>